In this video I'm going to talk a little bit about the web interface for the Duet controller by Usenet, which I'm using to operate my self-built CNC machine that you can see on screen now. I received the Duet from Usenet after meeting Ryan at Maker Central 2018, who offered to send me the controller to see what I could do with it. Now Usenet have their own kit CNC machine called the Workbee, which is what the web interface was written for, but the Duet platform is open source and can be used with different machines and applications. My CNC machine is a little different from the Workbee because I'm using ball screws to drive the mechanism. I have two proximity sensors to auto square and home the Y axis. I use a stationary touch probe and I also use a frequency drive spindle. My controller also has physical buttons to trigger pieces of G code which perform actions like moving to the probe location, pausing and resuming a job and performing a hard stop. This is what the previous web interface looked like. It was better suited for 3D printing, and this is what the web interface by Usenet looks like now, very different. The main changes here is that you can see your G53 machine position. Alongside this you have your work positions, which you can change and toggle through a drop down menu. When you turn the controller on, or each time it resets, you'll be prompted to home the machine, providing you enabled the command in the config.g file in your systems folder. Um, so I'm going to press home or axes. Uh, you can hear that in the background just homing. So I home to the rear of my machine to the right hand side and that sets the maximum distance uh, in my machine position. And you can see as that happens I also set the work position as well. Once homed the buttons which are referencing different homing.g macros in your system files go from red to orange. My G54 work coordinate and G53 machine position read the same because you couldn't see the G53 position in the previous web interface, so I'd use the G54 to visualize it, and I still haven't changed these settings. When I cut with my spindle, I swap to G55, and when I use my drawing tool, I use G56. You also have your request and top speed, which are in millimeters a second. It would be useful if the units of measurement could be changed to a different format. I prefer working in millimeters a minute and I'm still not used to reading these. And below that you have your machine movement. There you have some calibration commands, which I don't use because I have a stationary touch probe, as well as your homing buttons which reference the homing files in your system directory. On the opposite side you have shortcuts to set the current location and the active work coordinate to zero. Again, I don't use these as I've written macros which set things like the dating position and zero the bit to the wasteboard from the stationary probe location. It would be useful if these buttons could be customized, maybe with a right click which opens the underlying G code which could be edited, in the same way the various movement increments can. This drop down menu reveals all the work coordinates which you can toggle through. So G54 corresponds with work coordinate 1, G55 with 2 and so on. It would be nice if those work coordinates could be stated alongside the numbers, so users were reminded of the associated G-code. Further down there is a go to X, Y, Z, zero button. Again, it would be useful if this could be edited because some people, including myself, set the zero on the wasteboard bed instead of the top of the material. I have to be extra careful not to press this button while the material is on the bed, otherwise it would crash into it. In reality, this is also a really big button and could fit several macro buttons as alternatives. The final section include the job controls, Z adjustment, and a speed factor toggle bar which controls feed rate speeds during a job. What I'm missing here are more issues with the Duet firmware. For example, the job pause doesn't occur in real time and will execute remaining G code segments, which isn't really safe or practical for CNC, where a lot more can go wrong compared to 3D printing and a spindle PWM speed adjustment, although I found it's easier to set up a toggle switch and potentiometer directly to your frequency drive. You have more settings or tabs on the side, including your console, where you can review executed G-code, which are displayed with a traffic light color system. I think this is a clever feature, especially for the beginners, as it helps indicate what's occurring and it gives it kind of risk level, which is easy to understand. Below that is the height map, which isn't something I plan to use because I level my wasteboard by surfacing it. That said, you could use a probe to map uneven surfaces you might want to later mill onto. Then you've got your file management, with a section to upload G-code directly and wirelessly to the controller. These are some examples of files I've used to test my machine. Below that are your macros, which you can write and organize into folders. 
I split my spindle and drawing macros apart to reduce the likelihood I might make a mistake. Again, it would be nice if you can create shortcuts from these to your dashboard, which is what you'd most likely keep open while CNCing. Now you might have noticed I have a macro to turn my spindle off. It could be different in RepRap firmware version 3, but I'm still using version 2.04. And because my frequency drive needs two signals to turn the spindle on and set the rotations per minute, this is how I've just had to do it. An M5 command turns off the PWM signal, followed by a M42 command, which switches a pin that I'm using to turn the spindle enable off on the frequency drive. That setup has only worked because I was able to edit a post-processor file on the Vectric software I'm using to create my G-code. I'll share details about that in a separate video and article when I'm confident there's no more hidden surprises. Um, then you've got your system directory, so there's loads of stuff in there. I've been slowly editing these to show you my homing cycle. I've enabled two axis homing on the Y because I've got two motors, I've set up two proximity sensors um, and this allows me to auto square the machine. That was one of the main reasons why I moved to Duet with the larger machine it was a possibility of setting this up. Literally moments after I'd done that, uh, Gerbil have released uh, their latest version which as of today in uh, November 2019 is version 1.1H which you can actually set up with two limit switches and two separate y-axis motors which is uh, great. And finally you've got a general and machine specific section at the bottom where you can see the version number of your web interface or firmware can make changes to how the interface looks or operates and even enable a webcam although i'm not sure if it's for general monitoring of jobs or for fine adjustment and layout compensation in the machine specific area you can specify the feed rate of the move buttons which is done in millimeters a minute monitor the mcu temperature on your controller and even enable a widget to set up the usenest probing plate so overall it's a great platform, like I said there's a few changes I'd like to see, but compared to the 3D printed web interface it's much better suited for CNC use. I'll write a better summary of some of the things I'd like to see in future versions in an article on my website which you can access in the description below. I'll also provide a link to the web interface that you can download from the Usenus website. And finally, if you found this video interesting or useful, please consider joining me on Patreon to support making more videos like these. I'm still working on a manual for my machine that you saw at the beginning of the video, which I'm hoping to finish as soon as possible. And my patrons will be getting that first once that's available. And that leaves me with the final thing to say, which is thanks again for watching, and you'll catch me in the next one.